Macaroni and cheese, are you still in Australia? Are you still down under? I am down under. I don't know when I'll be up over. Um, Damn, don't don't sound excited about it. Well, it's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning here. It was very early. I had a late and night. I've woken up at 6 a.m. for you. so. And I have for you as well, so it's not a competition, bitch. So what? So I don't know why you're why you're acting like you're exhausted. Um, because uh, because this because this is why, you Papa Molly, you Papa are. Perky, you don't, you don't Papa know Perky what, get perked you, up. You don't know what those do when do people take them. So what are you talking about? Molly makes you feel like oh my god I'm on Molly and Percocet makes you feel like oh my god I'm on Percocet. <laughs> I Am I wrong? Or am I telling the truth? <laughs> so Did I lie? Did I lie? <laughs> Y'all sober niggas kill me. So, uh, so take a volley, take a Percocet. First of all, I don't, I don't, don't you do not, please do not insinuate that I am out here Percocet. That is not my life. I've never done that. I've, I've personally seen Monet on several, per, <laughs> three Percocets at once. I saw Monet do three whole Percocets. I was like, you going to do the whole one? She drank the first one. She drank one Percocet and then she ate one and then she smoked another Percocet. Have you heard of booty bumps? Yeah. When you put cocaine in your butt. It's not even cocaine. Apparently, like different drugs. You can put just you instead of you can, instead of uh, snorting it or injecting it. People just be putting drugs in their butt. It sounds so wild to me. Well, listen. This is not sibling druggery. This is <laughs> yeah, we had that one when wild. I when I taught y'all about antibiotics. We already did that episode. Oh my. Okay, y'all, please. <laughs> when I do not, please don't rehash the antibiotic conversation between libraries and antibiotics. You and me, we we, we can't read. We can't uh, get over syphilis. Apparently, <laughs> we can't. We we can't fight the common cold. Uh, but, <laughs> you don't take antibiotics for a cold, but pop off. I, oh God, here we go. Anyway, hi Bob. This is sibling watchery, so we're gonna watch stuff. Welcome back to Sibling Truckery. So this is the uh, the supermarket um supermarket, supermarket ball. Supermarket ball. Do you like a ball? I love balls. Um I famously have two. Um contrary to popular belief that I have one. Oh wait. One's a little bigger than the other one. It's just slightly. I mean it is it's point two centimeters. It's, 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 it's y'all, I've seen them. It's, it's a grapefruit and a golf ball. It's crazy. <laughs> it's about a millimeter, a millimeter, so no one really knows. Um, but uh yeah, I do like the ball episode. Ball episodes are fun. In general, though, I think this a ball episode is perfect in a 60-minute drag race format. An hour and a half ball episode, I'd be like, the, the next the, oh, you, we are back to an hour and no one's complaining now. Yes. I just wrote that we're back to an hour and no one's saying anything. No, this is an hour and a half. Wait, is it an hour and a half? It's an hour and a half. But when you watch it, there's no commercial, so it's like 57 no. minutes. Yeah. No, there's no way we're watching 30 minutes worth of commercials. Th there are no commercials. We're watching them on streaming. I know, but I'm at, I think that the format of the... Wait, wait, wait. Let me get through this. The format of the videos, we like... How long is the episode we just watched? I just watched. I literally just watched it. Hold on. Um, drag race this run time. Yeah, this is an hour and two minutes. Hour and two minutes and 40 and that, seconds. But, and if that was on TV, it would, it would equate to an hour and 30 minutes? Yes. What? So, a, a usual episode without ads, like, is 40 minutes. So we're going 40 minutes with ads an hour. So now it would be an hour with ads an hour and a half. Yeah. So what I'm what, asking is, if this were on TV, we'd be watching about 25 minutes worth of commercials. Yes. That sounds like that sounds like more. That sounds like too many commercials. I mean, but girl, they're, they're trying to sell you stuff. They're trying to pay for this. For so the show would be so the show's a third commercials. Yes, they're trying to pay for this. That's, that's what TV is. I mean, remember when back in the I day. I understand what commercials are, but, but it just but, seems like, like remember, a third of the time. Yes, that's always been. The commercials is Remember, if you watch inaccurate. if you watch like a half hour sitcom, like Family Matters, what? You, you, you're you getting like 20, 20, 21 minutes of TV. The other nine minutes are commercials. I guess, was Drag Race ever 30 minutes? No, it was never 30 minutes. And maybe season one. You know, I've never seen season one. You got to watch it. No, I don't need to though. Oh, I need to shave my head. Woo! I bought these new clippers. I'm obsessed. I haven't <laughs> even used them yet, but I use them with a the barber. Babyless, baby. I can't wait. I'm, I'm using them tonight. Come, I'm going out tonight. I cannot <laughs> wait to plug these Yo, clippers in and put them on my head. Says, <laughs> these, 
This is what the professionals use, honey. When y'all, it is so funny when Bob is like, oh, I'm going dancing. Ooh, I'm going out tonight. You just sound like somebody's old jazzy dad. <laughs> you know what else I bought, by the way? I bought I bought a ninja creamy. That sounds like a that sounds like a Heidi in closet uh uh, uh <laughs> Sex toy, <laughs> sex toy, a ninja creamy. No, the ninja creamy. I'm very excited. So the ninja creamy. I mean, okay, that's not rivalry, but the ninja creamy. Not to get too off topic, but the ninja creamy can turn anything into ice cream or sorbet, almost anything. <laughs> and it's not just a blender. It's the ninja creamy. It's a whole different thing. Wow. Why are you? So, so you can turn a protein shake into a ice cream. You have ice cream that has like 160 calories in it. What? What is your problem? What's your fucking problem? Girl, we are officially in our mid thirties. Uh, if this nigga is excited about a ninja cream, <laughs> well, I, well, okay, you said that until until you end up with a ninja cream. This was you. With it. This is literally you a few years ago with an air fryer. The same energy was you. I got an air fryer. Well, baby, I got an air fryer, honey. You acting like you just found the the, uh, the fountain of youth, baby. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's talk about these girls. Jesus Christ! So during the fall, I realized. Okay, so we, so we realized that when they reveal, they reveal that Jumbo chose Jumbo, <laughs> Jumbo chose Nasha Lopez's. Uh, so Nasha did not stand a chance. There was no way Nasha was going to survive this. Yeah, Nasha was definitely going home. But the gag was when they start. Um, Kahana starts taking out all the lipsticks to see who chose what. And she is gagged that she obviously good nature chose her, so that one doesn't count. But the other two people chose her, and she is tight. And Jessica fesses up. Jessica's like, "Yeah, bitch, I took your lipstick," um, because of your track. Because I don't of know that Jessica. I think Jessica was a little more. Jessica was was like, "I feel so bad." No, I don't think. But Jessica in her, was like, in her yeah. talking head, Jessica was like, "Uh huh." And bitch, you know, you're not gonna tell me how to vote. Well, she was saying that she just could not send her Puerto Rican sister home. Right. So now, would you do that for? Uh, like let's say it was you and the thing Someone from Atlanta, <laughs> Someone somebody from Atlanta. <laughs> Bitch, I would be like, beat it. I don't care if we're from Atlanta, baby. <laughs> well, because it, it, yes, I get Jessica's loyalty to her sister, but again, and this Kahana brings up this. She's like, you know, I had a, I had a better track record than than Nasha, so it's shady. And this brings up this this track record talk happens in, in All Star seasons, and I don't think. That you should be. I don't think that if you. It, yes, it would be nice. This is what you don't have to be fucking nice to do this, bitch. You vote out your competition if you want to. And I think Jessica's saying that, but she really did it because she know Kahana is a stronger player than fucking Nisha. I mean, I've obviously never done All Stars. You've done it twice, and you're obviously very good at it. You made it to the. You, you won one. You made it to the, round, the second place. So you're obviously clearly you're very good at All Stars. You've made it to the finale both times. Um, but I do think that you can like. I don't love this. Like we're all agreeing to vote. No, bitch. That's how you're agreeing to vote. I'm gonna vote how I want to vote. This is my vote. I can use it however I want to use it. We did not, as a group, agree to do track records. You agreed yeah. based on your own moral compass to do track record, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> BB like Zahara. BB Zahara, but well, BB. We don't know how she voted. She'll never reveal to us that to is the world crazy. how she voted. BB, BB, BB really has never told. That is insane behavior. She's the reason why they make you they make you show the camera. <laughs> like we all know she chose Trixie, right? Obviously, right? But why is she what is she afraid? Is she scared of Trixie? I think she's scared of the fans, girl. But uh... to be fair, Trixie's scared of her fans. <laughs> To be fair, bitch, Trixie's gonna her fucking fans too. And the other so, person yeah, that shows and, her and, was uh, Miss Mrs. Kasha Davis, and um, Kasha, and she said that she said that Nation was so emotional. Which and they showed that clip. I was like, I I could see like Mrs. Kasha Davis has seen some of a better reason to me because I could see talking to Nation Lopez face to face and her like, you know, when you're talking, you you can't even talk because the tears is bubbling up and you can't even get to like that would probably get at me too. That would get at my heartstrings, and I probably would have like, oh my god, I probably would have too. Noted for the next all winners. Okay. <laughs> Noted for the next episode of this podcast. You know, I realize that you and I now we literally we, we will never get to be on a drag race together. I know. Now, at this point, I know they really missed an opportunity. Anyway, they really did. Um, 
RuPaul's Best Friends race and it's teams. You know, if they do a Best Friends race, I'm not doing that shit unless Monet really wants to do it. But it doesn't like something Monet would really, really want to do. I would want to do it. Unless, the only reason I would do it, again, is if they did this, like, some type of, like, charity thing and they were giving, like, a million dollars to her. Like, let's say they give a million dollars to Black Court Town Hall or they give a, the, a million dollars to um, the exchange family uh, secret. I would, I would do it if it benefited our charities. The hell is the exchange family <laughs> secret? We, we need to give a million dollars to Julietta. That's what we need to get uh, to her, her family and what you put them through. Oh my let's, God. Let, let's give a million dollars for that. Anyway, the next day they walk in and James reveals that she's really into bondage. I know she has her fetish hanky on and she has a harness on too. Do you, uh, don't, don't gag me. Why does it gag you? you J- James, James can't be into sexy things. No, she can't. I just, I just, I just didn't. I just didn't see that because it's also interesting to see James out of her. We like she's not doing her voice. We're not hearing her yes. voice much. Yes, what I was saying last time. It's a little disorienting. Also, have you ever participated in the Hanky Code? No. Yeah, me either. I feel like back in the day, that would probably be so fun and so cute. But I mean, I guess we I mean, could you do, it now. do it at the. You could probably still do it today at the Eagle if you go. I was. Uh, at rehearsal the other day, and there's a lot of queer people there. Obviously, we're all a lot of artists, and a lot of them were like, only one person knew what the hanky code was. Only one. Are they young people? They're, I mean, some of them are young. I mean, they're they're like in their twenties and thirties. If they're like, yeah, the, I I think I only, I mean, I, I say I only know about it because I was in gay bars and I worked on them a lot. If I was just a regular smegula degula queer person, not in gay, not not in nightlife, maybe I would not I would not have known it known about it. I think nightlife is a reason why I do know about it. To be honest, maybe, maybe for me too, but I was gagged how many of them didn't know what the hanky code was. Like I went around the table and only one person, only one queer person knew the hanky code. I was out of like, it was like, like, like five or like five people. That was crazy to me. <laughs> you play a game? Can I read some hanky codes and see if you can guess or know which one they correspond oh, For sure. To? I'm, I'm, okay. They're, they're pretty, they're, it, it makes a, they're pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like they make sense. It's self-explanatory. Yeah. Like, like, like it's, it's easy to to decode what. They yeah. Are. Oh my god, we're, we're really small. We really say a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I had um last night at the show, Alaska, Alaska and Courtney came to the show, and I just I I fucking love Alaska Thunderfuck so much. She's so funny. She's so great. I love her. Alaska, I love her. I fucking love Alaska, and I fucking love Courtney Act. She's two really. She's great. Too. Great. Great queens. Anyway. Courtney is fit. Bitch, she is in her fit bag down here. She's like, she's like, oh, you know, she's at, she said, uh, I, I cannot do an Australian accent. She's like, you know, she, she. Well, I don't know, I'm not. He's got to lean into it, Mike. She's like, well, Will and I, here's, a, here's what it is. Renai. <laughs> Every time I, Manai. because of yeah. you, I just, I cannot hear the name Renee without being a Renai. <laughs> Renai. Oh, because of, uh, because of. Um, Marvin's Renee. Marvin's, yeah, <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not. So Marvin directed, uh, help with a uh, sibling rivalry and choreographed, and also my black video. And he has an assistant. She's Australian name is Renee. All right, Jacob, gonna read us some hanky code. So we're gonna start easy. What does piss. yellow signify? Oh, that's piss. All right. Do we know what red is? Blood. Red is fisting. Oh. Bob is correct. All right. What is also? I was talking to the, the same group of these like, queers. They didn't know that this is how you fist. Oh, I, you, 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 your square is so small. Oh, yeah. Your fist is. I like mean, this. there is some punch fucking, but it's mostly this. And I was like, y'all don't know that this is fisting. This is like how vanilla is sex getting these days. <laughs> I just think people aren't fisting much. Wait. So, bitch. Sorry. Another. I mean, I've never fisted, but I know I've never fisted, but I know this is. How it starts. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I know that. <laughs> Another quick sidebar. Trinity and I, we did this thing back in LA. We had to go on film this thing. And then so we had this piece. Whoa, 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 whoa. Another season. So you're back on All Stars. And we are in this car. Confirm or deny. Confirm or deny. <laughs> I'm not on fucking All Stars. Bitch, you're the one who is gone. We heard, we, we know what RuPaul is up to. We we know that this whole, your whole time away when I was a roost that you are filming All Stars three seven and nine. Also, RuPaul's <laughs> house architectural. This is, I, isn't it? Um, it's amazing. 
Monet, you've been on three seasons, bitch. You paid for one whole room. <laughs> go fucking get your shit. Oh, I need to go get one of those fucking like, disco bitch, balls. Give me my disco ball, bitch. I play, like, bitch. I've been on three seasons. You run me my visit to house, game night. Isn't his house amazing, Bob? I, I think we're gonna do a watch read for it on a later episode. I think that'll be good. Oh, yeah, that'll be good. Watch that'll be good. J- Jacob, good idea. Oh wait, so wait, we we have so many. We have to catch up with so many things. I I haven't talked. So me and Trina were doing this thing back in LA, and we're driving, and we have um, this PA is driving us. I don't know what Trinity said. And I think she asked him, like, well, what do you do outside of this? And he's like, I think he said, like, I'm in um, entertainment or whatever. And she's like, what? And then he ended up saying he was in adult entertainment, OnlyFans. He's just, like, really famous or really big in, on, on fisting in OnlyFans and adult co- content. And we're talking to him about fisting, whatever. And he's like a punch. He's like a punch fister, literally, like. Showing us the videos, and then he was saying, out, "We were like, so like, what's like? I'm very curious, like, what it is in the fisting." He's like, "He's like, do you know what really, what it really is about fisting, is the fact that the bottom feels like they are surrendering control because you can literally kill them." And I was like, "Go on." And he was like, "The fact that you can put your hand in someone, and and the videos he's going in, I'm not, this is not an exaggeration, like up to the bicep." And he's like, knowing that you can put your hand in there and just grab something and twist someone inside and that could kill them. That Wait, is he receiving or is he giving? He's it? giving it. He's he's a fisting one. And he was like, that is power of the power that makes that makes for a good top and a good bottom. And it makes for a, a a good fisting pairing. Can we move on? <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm not. I know you dabbled. I'm not. I'm not there yet. Okay, I would declare. Anyway, I have dabbled in, in fisting someone not being fisted is what I have dabbled in. And there was. And I'm not judging. I know. I'm not. I know. I just want to just. I just want people to know because then people are gonna start bringing me trying to fist me at meet and greets, and I'm like, hey, I'm not. I I don't accept at that. The meet and greet. <laughs> The fisting community. You're okay with them trying to get fisted at the meet and greet? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. The fisting community, they're they're fierce, girl. <laughs> so um they so RuPaul says there's gonna be a supermarket ball. They have, they have, they, have, they get the they have they brought two looks and they have to um make make one look right there in the workroom, which is pretty standard for the ball. Yeah. Uh, also was, notice that RuPaul didn't throw a twist. There was no twist. There was no and uh, you have to do a you know a, 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 a milk dance or a milkmaid dance or some shit. <laughs> That's only for the for the for the makeovers, not the ball ones. Yeah. Yeah. So the issue is right. So the three looks are Queen of the Dairy Isle, which mm-hmm. is from home, Fruity Patootie from home, and then Supermarket Supermodel, which is unconventional materials. Yes. I hate I hate yeah. unconventional materials. I like a design challenge. I am so happy that the two on All Star Seven were just designed, not fucking unconventional material. I don't want to glue shit to shit. Yeah. Well also, um Jessica Wild was like, Well, I did well in the unconventional. Like, baby, it was curtains. That's not uncon that's fabric. Curtains are just fabric with 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 a loop at the end. Bob, you so 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 you say you had fabric for yours? Yes, I had fabric. I lucked out. I didn't get uh the the coins or the or the or I I got very lucky. I even said it in the video on the episode. I said, "Baby, I just have fabric. This is great." <laughs> <laughs> and that dress is still together, hanging in my living room right now. Okay, I want to say um, it's together, but it's there. I wore it in a video recently. Did you? Like when I recently, a couple years ago, on my page. Uh huh. In T way, <laughs> um, we realized that Casa Davis said that she can't sew. I'm like, girl, I at least know. one lesson. Yeah, but you know what it is? You know, Kasha, Miss Ka- Mrs. Kasha Davis is an older gal. She's like, I'm not, I don't want to do no lessons, which I am what I am. And she's bringing that energy into the shower. You are going home on third episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you are. What you are. Lala Ree talks about her iconic. Well, yeah, at this point, it is iconic. I would say. Oh yeah, it is infamous. It is. It is. Is it the worst outfit we've ever seen on Drag Race? Like since then, still. Yeah, I think it is. I think. I think, so. it, really I think is. it is too. It really is. It was just. Literally just a couple. And well, the gag to me is, I know we, didn't, we talked about it before, the gag that she did not even cover the entire thing with bags. Just like the random just four at the front of rhyme and the rest. Like that is so crazy to me that she really like pitched that. She tried I to pitch it. I she didn't just open the bags up and try to give them some shape or something. Yeah. 
it's in but also Lowry, if you're listening just you don't need to get a sponsorship or a deal with anyone just get yourself some bags have them print on one side just printed you in the look and just have to be the la la gift bag i promise you that will and if you need me to help you and get a little cut of the money i will help you make these bags all you need to do is just go to like what's the one of the print printful or something print print print, printful print all over me printful (laughs) something like that go to red red bubble printly Printly, <laughs> Printly fans, <laughs> and and make the La La Re gift bag. When I tell you, oh, you yes. know that was oh, people will buy it all the time to give their families stuff for Christmas, birthdays. That's a great idea, Bob. Bob, y'all, I'm, I'm gonna take La La Re. I'm gonna say, do you need help making the? Uh, I try. You to... know, La Re, You know, she's friends with my mom. Is she? Yeah, my mom used to. My mom. She's doing my mom's drag show. Wait, sorry. As I said that, my um, SIRI activated. What's that? SIRI. S- what? Siri. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to say it because she'll be listening. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay. So, so, and we 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 also find out in the midst of all of this, um, James Mansfield. She's very, 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 very confident. And something a lot, something that Candy Muse said, I agree with. Who is cooking in their fucking house? Can you like I don't go to the supermarket? Who's cooking in their fucking house? Honestly, I felt so seen. When I tell folks I don't cook, they be looking like I'm crazy. But someone Jacob cooks in your house, though. So it's not like no one cooks in your house. Like I've been to how Jacob be making breakfast and shit. What do you mean? Who, who cooks in their house? Kind of. Jacob be making like an omelet sometime. Do you omelet That's maker? cooking. Yeah, you're in like a little omelet maker. I make noodles. Jacob and I don't be, we don't be like busting down. That is we don't true. Be, like, that cooking, is true. Cooking. Andy and I cook. You and Jacob, okay. Every time I go to y'all's house, y'all have y'all have or these niggas always got sweet greens. Bitch, sweet greens be on deck, just on just on. <laughs> but yeah, I ate sweet greens today. <laughs> I know y'all be having the sweet greens I got on tap. Sweet greens over there right now. You got sweet greens on tap. Hey, shout, bro. Out, to the har- hey, shout out to the Harvest Bowl. No goat cheese. <laughs> S- substitute black and chicken. A. Hey. Oh my God! If you do not, get, if you do not get black and chicken, what are you doing? That roast chicken be all white and gray looking. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's not giving. Um, and it's the same price, by the way. You, when you sub it out online, it's literally the same price. Like, yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um. So anyway, um, I, I do feel Lala Ree is triggered by this challenge in general, which honestly i agree but then lala re and heidi are trying to do this alliance thing and they i don't know what's up with them bitch find a corner whisper something <laughs> they're just in the middle of the room talking being like why is everyone listening you're in the middle of the workroom talking at full voice but you know when you're on drivers bob you know this like when you're like doing stuff every, people are like be so caught up in their own worlds you don't think people are paying attention but they do they do be listening I can't confirm. People be listening. I was talking about how much how Alexis Michelle apparently loves it to to hook up with a drag queen or at least try to. Bitch, the first episode, she was like, I have a crush on La La Ree. She was like, La La Ree's hot. So yes. Alexis is a like, high guy girl. Also, I mean, would, you, would you hook up with another drag queen? I would. I, I the opportunity never I know you have. So go ahead and lie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be spilling get the tea. I'll pour it all over this computer, bitch. <laughs> Would you go? I wonder who my, who, Mon- who fucks Monet. I know who. who any? Have you? Have you? Has I don't have you hooked up with another Jaggers girl? Yeah. Yes, I told you. Oh, on the podcast. like that. Like that. The, two. Two. I know the one. Yeah. And and the one I mean, I've mentioned on the podcast before, but the one when I, I've mentioned on, the, on my on my YouTube page, remember it was my podcast. Um, I don't want to keep putting. Our business out in the streets, but the one that was um, do- um I, Dolly, I know Dolly, yeah. I know, and Cracker. Oh, right, but Cracker yeah. doesn't count because it was pre drag race. I mean, we were both pre drag race. Yeah, and the, one, the one with the other girl was also pre drag race, but it was before she, she was a queen, not you. She was a queen. Yeah, yeah but I was. I have been on drag race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, we already talked about it. It's literally been all over Twitter, uh, yeah. so I don't know why I'm yeah. being coy about Can it. Can I tell you? I knew I just wanted to hear you say it again. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I did. I generally forgot. <laughs> and me and Alexis went on a date before either either of mm-hmm. us was on Drag Race. Alexis Michelle. And am I missing anyone else, Jacob? <laughs> uh, 
Poppy, <laughs> Poppy Black. Did she did she really quit drag? Is that a thing? I can't tell if, it, if she's doing a bit or if she's really or she's. Like, I can't tell. I, Jacob, what is it? I think Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, what? I think Jacob's been more drag race girls than I have. Oh, work. I'm not gonna say who. Well, that doesn't say that. <laughs> I love you with that too much. I love you. I love you. Um, okay, let's keep let's keep moving. Oh wait, money, but but you, but you but, but, but what, what do you think of queens who are like I would never be with a drag queen? I mean, I, that's the prerogative. I, I I I think I don't know. Maybe it's like doctors that don't want to fuck up the doctors. It's all the thing. I don't know, but I'm think I think maybe maybe like other drag queens or other drag race girls because then I think other drag race girls could get messy. Like y'all, you know. I mean, I was I, I wouldn't want to date dating and fucking like I wouldn't want to date another comedian. Well, I would never want to date a comedian. But would a you comedian? Would you date another drag queen? Yeah. Why not a comedian? Because you think y'all be competing? Comedians are messy. Like comedians are like. Just don't. I don't know how you do it. I would never want to get a comedian. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. You would, never, you would never catch me dating a comedian in these in the comedy three. You, you identify as a comedian? Oh! <laughs> Apparently you do too. When did your special come out? Anyway. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite comeback. So, okay. So, when Rue comes and talks to the girls, first of all, RuPaul is like obsessed with Jimbo. Everyone is. Jimbo seems like someone that is very fun to like talk to. Like I, I, I am obsessed with watching Jimbo interact with people, so I can understand talking to them. I've never met Jimbo. Have you? No, me either. But also, Jimbo like breathes in. RuPaul's like, ah! <laughs> RuPaul has one every season. That was RuPaul and Got Mick. That was RuPaul and Jinx. That was like RuPaul gets favorites. Um, Alexis during the chat with Ru, Alexis Rivers that we. We remember that Alexa Michelle went home during a ball. So oh, yeah. her and Lala Rhea both very nervous about this episode in um, in general. That YMCA and, um, ball was wild. It was. Um, when Kahana was talking to her, I didn't realize how much uptake, upkeep goes into bo- like body work. Yeah. Bitch, when you get a light bulb, you have to wear like a faha for like six months. You have to get like massages after them. Like it's... It's like a thing. Like it, 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 it takes a lot. So it, it, it really do cost a billion to look that good. Uh huh. Yeah. She uh-huh. was like rolling pin, not rolling pins, but like foam rollers, and like I can't sit. So I was like, this is wild. Yeah. I mean, but you see these viral videos of bitches coming from from Florida with their BBLs just on the plane, can't even, which it cannot be legal, right? It's on the Spirit Airlines, just booties in the air, kneeling down on the seats because you can't sit on your ass for like two weeks. But then the other the other version is uh, all the men coming from Turkey with their heads all wrapped up. <laughs> oh, y'all see these? I may have a connect of one that does black hair. We going together? I'm, I'm good. I'm I've tapped out of the hair game. Well, come with I'm, me. If I want a hair, I will do a little man weave for a week and then go back to this. I am out of the hair game. Really? Like you would never you would never want to do it ever. No, it's too much. It's too much. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little man weave here and there. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to know. Wait, wait, really quick. Like, why is is it because you just don't want to have hair, or the maintenance is too much? Like, why don't you want to have hair again? I don't want to. I don't want to do the surgery. I don't. I don't want. I don't want the healing process. Mm. I. I. I think I look good with a bald head. Um, I also know that my balding is advanced, so I would have to go back two or three times because like mine goes all the way back to here, and then I'm also balding from the back too. So I'm, I have to go back for this part and then come back for this part. <laughs> okay. And I've heard Mateo talk about it for so long, like the being awake and it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Um, hey, hey, real quick. I, no, hey, I'm saying hey. Actually, I'm them. Hey, I'm listen. I'm going to say it. Listen. <laughs> listen. I know that you already enjoyed this episode, but um, if you could do us a favor, if you want to see the rest of this episode visually, see it. All of our episodes are available on our Patreon. Yes, we have the full Monty. Every little second of me gathering this ball black bitch is on our Patreon for your uninterrupted viewing pleasure. Are you in front of a mirror? Anyway, let's continue <laughs> with the episode. <laughs>
Listen, when we are in rehearsals for shows, it is always very hard to stay properly hydrated. One of us does work a lot harder during our show than the other person does. And we'll let you all come to the shows and find out which one of us that is. But you Maybe they've seen the pictures drink. of us kicking. They've seen the picture and they know it's yeah. you. We, so we, it is hard to remember to drink enough water. Liquid IV is the category winning hydration brand fueling your well being. And their hydration multiplier is the one product you're missing in your daily routine. It's just one stick. You get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than water alone. Use it first thing in the morning before a workout when you feel run down after a long night out, a long night at the bars, a long night's kick in, and on very long flights. It's festival season also, and planning for faster, efficient hydration is essential. Liquid IV has you covered while you prep before, power through the headliner, and recover after the weekend. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than the water alone, and with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, honey, is fierce. One stick of Liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you twice as fast and more efficiently than water by itself. It contains five essential vitamins b3 b5 b6 b12 before you finish let me tell you that was very good oh god and vitamin c with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks and it's made with non-gmo premium ingredients liquid iv believes that equitable access to clean and abundant water is the foundation of a healthier world amen liquid iv partners with leading organizations for innovative solutions to help communities protect both their water and their futures to date liquid iv has donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world grab your I wonder liquid iv help hydrate some uh, monet's wigs now grab your liquid iv in bulk <laughs> nationwide at costco or you can get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code rivalry at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code rivalry at liquidiv.com you really hurt my feelings what do you spend on subscriptions each month? Most of us think we spend around $80 on subscriptions, but baby, <laughs> it's more like $200. You have to check out Rocket Money. They help you, you manage. You think, you think wasting money is fun? <laughs> it is not fun. I'm laughing from crying, Bob. I have to laugh to keep from crying. They help you manage and cancel subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forget all about with just a tap. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, uh, monitors your spending, and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. See, I'm not laughing because I don't think this is funny. Over 80% <laughs> of people have subscriptions they forget about, and chances are you are one of them. Like the streaming app uh, just to watch one show or that free gaming trial that you never actually use. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want it to pay anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It is that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little fishy. I know I've been getting my alerts when I see uh, some uh, some charge from Bob the Drag from LLC. I'm like, I ain't authorized that. Blah. That's just what you owe Locked. me. <laughs> Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. That's rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. Rocketmoney.com slash rivalry. Stop those unwanted Bob the Drag Queen LLC payments, y'all. It's really easy. And Oh, and then... um. And then uh, Heidi has an emotional conversation about her grandmother passing away. This is an emotional episode for Heidi. Did you watch Untucked? I did not watch Untucked. Uh, it, this is a, I think Heidi just had it. Like she, It's like she's just had it. You know what I mean? Let me say, this, these all-star streets are not easy. It's really not easy to do the show. Doing Drag Race on a regular season is hard. And all-stars is, is hard, too. Like Drag Race is hard. Drag Race is hard. Yeah. They talk about their they talk about their relationship. Darren Lake says she's never been in a relationship. I think she's in her four fifties. Says she's never been in a relationship. And she's like, she's not longing for one. She's not against it, but she's not like longing for it. I was watching this interview of this celebrity saying, like, like, I'm just, I'm just Oh, La Rose. Do you see La Rose talking to Johnny Sibley talking about A romantic, being a romantic. Yeah, a romantic. That's I've never heard of that before. And that's maybe some people just are aromantic. I think we have a common friend that's aromantic. I don't think, I don't think I don't think he used the word aromantic. He but didn't, he like, but that's I'm what not. It, yeah, but that's I'm not what in love. Is. He goes, I don't do love. He he's like he's not asexual. He does have sexual desires, but he does not want to date anyone. And it kind of sounds like what what um 
what Darren Lake was saying. She was like, I I want to live by myself. I want to have my own stuff. I want to do my own thing. Yeah. And um, honestly. <laughs> Being aromantic. Did you, did you, <laughs> did you come up with the, you, did, did you, did you come up with this aromantic thing? I've never heard that before. No, I think. I don't think I came. I, I mean, I, I think I've heard of it before. Maybe I just derived the word. No, aromantic exists. I didn't mean aromantic. Yeah, no. Aromantic is a is a real thing. Yeah, it exists. It's been online for a while. Yeah. Huh. It's it's there's like asexual. Right. Who the people who don't have sex? They they don't. I mean, they don't have sexual sexual things with other people they, or ever. Desire. Yeah. Interesting. I think I feel like a lot of New Yorkers end up becoming aromantic. Aromantic. I know a lot of you New Yorkers who are aromantic. I mean, Darren Lake is a New Yorker, but like Rochester, like no, like New Yorker, New Yorker. That's rich coming from some fucking oh, nah. fuck fucking uh, Calabasas, Kalamazoo, uh, 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 Columbus, Ohio, Georgia. That's rich coming from you, nigga. She's from the state, nigga. She was born in the state, my nigga. Where are you coming from? Anyway, um, we've already arrived. I've lived in New York City as long as you lived here, so <laughs> keep it cute, honey. Keep it cute. Um, so we we hit the runway. Um, let's get into these looks. Let's talk about these these looks. So RuPaul is back on her little mini dress game. I told you, and you uh, two episodes ago, you were like, "No, Monet, she's back in her gown era." RuPaul, blah, blah. I'm like, "No." I said, "Let's see." No, I, think I said, "Let's wait." And no, see. no, 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 no. Oh, Jay, please put. To quote Bob, roll the beautiful bean footage. No, you were like, no, I'm, I'm calling it. RuPaul is back in her gown era. Paul, we already have you. You we already have you gaslighting me two episodes ago, <laughs> me, saying you never called your look basic when you fully said basic. <laughs> so we already got you in these gaslight streets. What, okay, what is it you You're, snapping today? Are you snapping today? What's what's going on with the snapping? Honey, <laughs> snapping on you. <laughs> snapping on you. Yes, I am. Honey. Anyway, um, let's go over these looks. Jimbo, the clown, the drag queen. Okay, so Jimbo's the first look. I love this. I think this is this is a very like mod sixties uh, uh, silhouette, and I think it looks, it looks it's very cool. I like how it looks, but I didn't realize it was supposed to be. I didn't realize what it was until until she said it, and I was like blowing bubbles in. Oh, okay. If I saw this out of context, I wouldn't think milk at all. I would just think like, uh, like uh, early two thousands pop star. Um, Gaga. This is very Gaga. Look. This is Gaga doing something. Um, yeah, I, I agree. But when she explained it, I got it, and I was like, "This is cool." And I, I and th this is kind of Jimbo always does this. Jimbo, like, get, you give you give Jimbo the prompt, and they just go like another direction with it that you're not thinking of. But when you hear it, you're like, "Oh, that makes sense," and that's cool. Yeah, and her fruity patootie looks kind of is pretty cool. It is. As well, it is. And um, she looks at like she looks at like the Jolly Green Giant in the other look. The other so look is terrible. That. The other look is terrible. I wouldn't say it's terrible, but she does look like the Jolly Green Giant. Oh, because no, but I guess, but, he, but he's all green though. It's just he has, yeah, he was okay. something similar, but I, I, it's just not flattering. Like, she has no waist in this. She looks like a green blob. Money, how is this not? This is basically the Jolly Green Giant outfit. This is, <laughs> I'm kind of gagged at how much this is just the Jolly Green Giant outfit. No one, maybe they, I don't know why they didn't mention that she's just wearing the Jolly Green Giant's outfit, but um, I can see that it has a little bit of waist because the 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 lettuce. At the bottom is bigger than the lettuce at the at the at the top, I, but I don't love it, and I'm I'm really yeah. shocked that Untuck they were like I thought Jimbo was gonna win. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't I don't love this. I don't love this. So let's go back to Kahan. Let's go to Kahana Montrees. This is our second Fifth Element reference. Was, who is where's Fifth Element? The middle the middle look she said was uh, inspired by the, by Chris Tucker the Fifth Element. She did. Yes, she did, and um. And uh, Heidi did a Fifth Element reference to it. Yeah, I remember that Heidi did it last with her with her Gap cow print, whatever, some, some the black and white thing. Yeah. Um, but, well, so, so let's go to order. Her first one, I thought I thought this first one was good. She loves these titties, and they are just a I'm always scotch. Slightly distracted. Yeah. The fact they're not the same color. I'm yeah. always slightly distracted. By that. And I don't know if I'm seeing that because I'm just watching it, or because you said it now it's in my brain. But it, I'm bothered by it now too. I mean, why she why, why, why she got them dark them them, them brown girl titties on? Yeah. Um, the second look, I like the second look. I think it's just is really camp, but in like a very fashion editorial way. Like, because she's not just like a banana. They put like the like the all the what you call it the little liver spots that the bananas get when they're when they're getting old, 
and from from the banana's liver, <laughs> whatever you call them. I mean, I did from the liver of the banana. They, they're called liver H spot, H, H spots. And um, but I do like this hair. I think it's supposed to be the tip of the banana. Oh, I get it because it's open. That's why it's the same color as the inside. Yeah, I just don't like that. The look that she made is basically the the free patootie look. It's like the same look with the exaggerated shoulders, and they said it's like the same look. I don't. Know. I wouldn't say it's the same look, Bob. They're very similar. They're similar, but the fact that she made that there, I think, is very impressive. Yeah, I guess so. Let's go on to three. Um, we go into James Mansfield. Uh, I liked her first and her third look. I liked her um, her uh, Queen of the Dairy, mm -hmm. Queen of the Dairy Isle. Yeah, and her and her uh, supermarket supermodel. But this middle look is not great for me. Her yeah, two look is not great. And she brought that from home. That looks like the design challenge yes. one. Her middle one looks like she just made that there. The supermodel supermarket one looked like she brought that because it's really great. I love that she got her. This bitch be, she will have her titties out, honey. Look at them tits. But they also look they're so close to her skin. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it looks like it's it's hers. Yeah, and I know for black girls it is hard. I had to get mine like custom painted. It yeah. is hard in these streets for black folks. It to is get stuff hard. in our skin tone. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Um. Let's go on to um Candisha to, Muse. She looks great in all three of these looks. I like every single one of these looks, honestly. So, okay, but the silhouettes are pretty much the same across the board, which is I know the third one, she has like volume to make like almost like a dress. But also last episode, Candy Muse wore similar, similar similar her runway was similar to her first and second looks. It's like she bought a lot of these Leotardy kind of bodysuit things. Yeah, but she looks good. She does look like, good. I like them. She does look good, but I'm just pointing that out because you 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 called you pointed that out for Kahana. I'm like, well, this bitch is doing it too. That's a fair point to make. That's a fair point to make. Uh, I love the, the the spilled milk idea. It looks really really cool. Yeah. I love this uh this boa that she has for a cherry look. I just love all these looks. I think she looks really good. She looks really really good. The one she made there is really cool too. I like uh uh the silhouette of that is really cool and. It, because she has the V, so your eyes come in, go into her waist, and the fans out with this spoil skirt thing. I think it was, she looks great. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's go um, on let's to, go to Alexis Michelle. This first look, I get it. I like it. I like all three of these looks. I will say the middle look isn't really giving fruit, though. Yeah. It's it, a nice dress, but it's, it's it's not giving fruit. Agreed. And I was, and because she was, she's supposed to be a Blackberry. And I'm like, um, yes, it's the color, and she has it in her hair, but it doesn't give fruit. But it is a very beautiful look. I love this second look. Is, is I fucking love it. Alyssa Michelle almost always looks great. Like she's very often looks very good. She 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 understands her drag very well. I hate, and I, I get matching your eyebrows to your hair because that's what most people do. I white hair and white eyebrows be looking so crazy to me. Like to me, she looks like some bitch, bitch for the Hunger Games in the middle. Yeah, I do think she should have darker, darker hair. Her third look is a little simple, but it does still look good. Yeah, it's very simple. It's solidly safe. What I was think. the what? What was the skirt? Paper brown paper bags, like at a grocery oh, store. Smart. La La Ree, Her first look is this Dairy Queen look is so good. I love this look. It's giving Mary J. It is giving Mary J. I think this look is so good. Her her um her Caramel Caramel Apple. look is, cool, is also good, and her third look is not like brilliant, but it's a huge step up. <laughs> I think it looks nice. It's just it's it's simple, but it look her she looks great. Each of these looks is good. The third look is a little simple, but yeah. this is, in my opinion, solidly safe. That first look is really really good though. I'm not a, I'm not in love with the first. I'm not in as in love with the person as you are. I think it's fine. Um, and I think the caramel apple one, I wish the gown was a little too short for me. I wish the gown was a little, like, went to the floor when she was walking about, it bugged me. And I agree. The third one, um, is very simple, but it's definitely not. I mean, the bar is also so low for her on design challenges. We will take anything, True. you know? True. Let's move on to Darian Lake. Um, the only one I like was the middle look. Yeah. The middle look. What was this? the first one was supposed to be like milk, right? Spilled milk again. Yeah, she's milk. It's just like it's not reading. The milk on the white on the white is just not reading. Yeah, it makes her look really short. And the first um, one, she looks like a Jedi. 
No, she's like Princess Leia. That's what it is. Yeah, someone from that like universe, from that multiverse. Um, yeah. yeah, the second one though, like to see Darren in this like form fitting bodysuit and uh, having the fucking cherries on her on her titties and her pussy and the banana on her ass. That was I was I was I was like, all right, Darren. Yeah, it was, it's very camp. I love I love how camp and how cute it is. Yeah. Um, but this third look is is not great. Yeah, it's not. And I, like, why that skirt? If she would have carried that drip pattern into, like, not uh, made that, like, a, a dress, like a bodycon dress with that same thing, that would have been great. But that blue skirt out of nowhere just felt so weird. It, look, it didn't look great. I agree, Michelle. Um, Let's go on to uh, Jessica the winner Wild. of the uh, episode, Jessica Wild. I like this this milk and cereal look a lot. I think it's really cute. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a fun way to to um, to not personify. It's giving life to, but like to. It's a fun way to show cereal and milk, because the other word would have been <laughs> when I did a gig. I was at Play Nashville, and uh, I, Jay Jolie was there. And um, she's great. It's my first time ever meeting her. She's so fun. She was so great. But she came out. She had this. She made like she had a cat suit box. Not but she, no, she had a cat suit with like cereal print on it. And she did your favorite thing. She had a cereal box in her head. <laughs> a bowl of cereal. On her head. I was like, Bob would hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So I like I that she it. just has it in her hand. They're oversized. They're big. I think this is like very like. Avant garde of so to be a you know they sell giant they, there's a company that sells like one giant fruit loop. Oh, they do? It's not fruit loops, but it's like it's like off brand, but there's a company that sells like one huge fruit loop. Huh. Well, so this is why it's so easy to make. This is like a you know those things with that kids have on the, that little stacky thing and you you stack the rings by size, or you can just literally buy like those and do it. Oh yeah, probably. I, I like I mean her second look, I don't love it, but I love that I really enjoyed the callback too. I love that drink. I had I, I really enjoyed that callback. Yeah, if it was you, yo, Bob loves an acai bowl. Bob would have dressed up as a fucking acai bowl. I love acai bowls. I do. With fucking granola just dripping down your head. And she looks good in her third. She looks good in her third look. It's it's not my favorite look of the night, but she does look good though. I was gagged. I was like, this is no. This was not because again, yes, you. I know they're judging all three looks equally, probably. But I feel like the one that you designed, it should be like. 50, 25, 25. I, I agree with that. I agree. It's like you're making that there. So this third, the one she made it there, I did not like it. Let's go on to Mrs. Kasha Davis, who, who, uh, I mean, her sour cream look, I did not, I did not understand that at, I was like, why is she acting like that? I ain't getting and there. I don't know why there's a circle coming off the shoulder. <laughs> I, I, I don't. <laughs> How was this sour cream? I thought she had a white dress and she was like, and I'm going to act grumpy. Yeah, yeah. It, I did not get sour cream. It was not giving sour cream at all. And her middle look is stunning. It is really good. It looks this really good. This look is my favorite look of the night. I really think it is my favorite look of the night. I have to look at There's a lot of look. I'm, I, it's up there for me for sure. Because And so, it's also so unexpected of her. I love this headpiece with this ostrich. It, it is a very fabulous look. And this third look is my least favorite. It is bad. It is bad. That is, it is so bad. fucking ugly. It's not good. It, it is offensive. <laughs> I do feel that way in my heart of hearts. I don't want to like. I don't. I don't want to look at it. Bitch, T- it's crazy. She had my favorite and my least favorite look of the night. T.S. Madison. That's wild. This I hate. Oh, girl. This. It was it. This look. This. I hate. I was like, meme it, <laughs> meme it, meme it. Also, CS Madison looks so beautiful. That hair was it's growing in. from her scalp. So it's going to Heidi in the closet. Her, Heidi her in the closet? Oh, Heidi in the closet. Oh, Heidi in the closet? Heidi in the closet. What, what drives me a little bit crazy is her hips pads were so high. It was driving me crazy. Heidi always pads like that, though. Does, I think I don't think I think that her hip pads are high because she's trying to show her legs, so she's pulling her pads up higher than they would normally go because she wants to show a bare leg. Huh. I mean, her legs are good. I love this. I love this milkman look. This is so. This is so. 
cunt yeah, yeah. is very, very, very cunt. This is like some fucking uh, mosquito shit. I love, love, love this milk lady look. And this, I, the I, strawberry, I the strawberry look is cute too. Mm-hmm. She even is, I do. I like her strawberry look. She even is strawberry blonde hair. I love that. Her, I do not like this uh, third look though. I see what you're trying to do. It just got a little crazy. Like this, uh, the mermaid stuff at the bottom is good, but it got crazy at the waist and the top. It just got too busy. Yeah, and it's also so short. Yeah, I think you're trying to go for like that fashion length though. Like you know, like sometimes you see those bridal things and it trumpets there, like at the knee, and it doesn't go to the floor. I see the silhouette. I think that's what you're trying to go for, but it doesn't look good. She was very hurt that she did not make it to the top. She was like, "I'm leaving." I'm leaving. I'm going home. <laughs> she said, she goes, I'm leaving. I'm, bitch, I'm fucking leaving. Can't do that. You can't leave. If I was there, I want to say that if I was there and my competitor was like, I'm leaving, I'd be like, bye. Like, I'm, I'm, maybe not. I don't no, know. Maybe you I'd wouldn't, be more Bob. Bobby, you, know? you are a cold ass bitch. You're not, you're not that cold. Um, and we'll quickly go over the, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, fame quick, game. the fame game. Mm-hmm. Like, their, their social is not going hard enough for me. I thought these bitches were going to be in these streets going wild. I thought they were going to be out here doing videos, doing, like, these little photos. For me, baby, go in. It's $50,000, you know? Yeah, and I think that, um, but they, this Nation's um, uh, Milk Lady look, I love it. It's, it's very good. I agree. I like Nation's look. I don't like her um, watermelon look much, though. I don't like it either. It looks like a Venus flytrap. Yeah, it does. And um, and I don't care for uh, Monica's looks. I don't understand what she's even supposed to be for the milk one. She said that she was... Um, wait, she she explained it. She explained it in Untucked. She, she's wearing cow print. And why is she gold again? <laughs> she explained it. A uh, cowbell? No, no, no. She explained it. Hold on. Hold on, Holiday. I'm going to play it real quick and I'll tell you. Because she she, just, she she explained it. I was like, oh, yeah, I still didn't like it. But I understood what she was saying. Hold on. So you're Monica Beverly Hills apologist. No, I said I don't like the look. But when she explained it, I was like, oh, I understand. I just still don't like it. My Coco Schnoot. Sweetie pie, I think it's your hair. Cheese, she's melted cheese. (laughs) Melted (laughs) cheese. (laughs) Why you making that face? She's melted cheese. Melted cheese. Melted cheese is dairy, Monet. But what is it? Because it's metallic, it's melted. No, because it's drippy. It's kind of drippy. It's like it's in drips. It is in drips. You can't tell in the picture, but it is in drips. Well, there you have it. <laughs> so, uh, the the bottom. Okay, so um, on the on the on the main stage and they're judging. Kasha was basically saying her goodbyes. Same for Untuck when she was talking to um. Jessica Wow, she was basically saying her goodbyes. Jessica Wow wins the episode, wins the challenge. Mm-hmm. And Darren Lake and Kasha are both up for elimination. And um Wait, uh, really really quickly, do you do y'all agree with Jessica Wilde winning the challenge? Oh, do you let think me look somebody else was stronger? Let me look through. Let me look through all the full packages real quick. You know, I would have probably given the win to either Alexis, Michelle, or Candy, to be honest. Yeah, I'm. I, my, my top three were Alexis, Candy, and Kahana, and I would have given it to... Oh, I don't know. I would have given it to Candy or Kahana, because Alexis's third look that she made, yes. The other two are strong. I mean, her, her middle look is obviously her best. The first one is fine, and the her one she made is fine. I would give it to Candy or Kahana. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Candy. I'm going to say I would give, I would give this win to Candy. Yeah. Although her silhouettes are very similar, I do think Candy's package is better. But I don't think it's like outrageous that uh, Jessica Wilde won. But I am glad that she won because that lip sync was 
I, I do it's, wish that she had waited just a little bit longer yeah, to get coconuts. I agree. If she had just like there could have been two moves. If she would have like revealed a little bit later and then taken off a little bit, but it was really like I love Raja, but there there was no chance oh. that that Jess was gonna lose that lip sync. Not no at way. all. And also, just to have this like she, it was obviously a look after Veneno. Did, did you watch Veneno on HBO? Yeah, she yeah she was giving Veneno. It was Veneno down, and she obviously packed this one just to bring it because I mean maybe that she had the lip sync song before, and she just had just anyway whatever this however the stars aligned that she got to lip sync to coconuts in this look it was perfect and i have seen many boots for queens these are just extra have you seen titties that have been that jiggly before they were like extra jiggly never i have never seen titties that jiggly that were like bre- i've never seen a breastplate that jiggly it was wild yeah it was and it was just it was when she like named them and she it was great it was really good bitch she had like a thought and her titty was just like moving it was like they were just moving on their on their own accord her, the air conditioner was on her titty was like that's what they mean when we say when we, when, we, when people say calm your tits they're talking to her <laughs> the titties was tittying yeah um but it was great she won thirty thousand dollars dollars <sighs> that was the thirty thousand dollar lip sync honey. And she deserved it. Worth thirty thousand dollars. She fucking earned it for sure. And so Jessica Wild won, and she announced that she was going to be eliminating Mrs. Kasha Davis. Um, Kasha's ready which, to go. It's it was her time. Kasha was ready to go. Um, Kasha was Kasha was barely fighting herself. She was like, "All right, I'm good. Peace <laughs> out." She was so sad when she said, "There's always time for kind kindness." I was like. She's so sad. <laughs> Heidi was fucked up. I mean, because Heidi, I think Heidi, we're seeing Heidi is is, be, is being a little frustrated, and yes, she was sad. The cost is, is gone. I think Heidi is more so crying for herself. If I'm, if if we're being real, yeah. So <laughs> Mrs. Kasha Davis has sashayed away to the house and um, to the house, like, what house? To, to the house, the house, of, the legendary house of Davis. <laughs> And of course, Miss um, Darian Lake lives to slay another day. day. This is Darian has been in the bottom twice, Bob. If she's in the bottom again, you think she's going home? Well, I think that okay, I will say this one thing I was saying about when Kahana was like, My track record, I was like, Baby, two episodes is not enough to discuss track records for me. I think the fourth episode is when we can start taking into account track records. I would agree, that's, in my opinion. I, that's that's I would agree with that. Um, it's not looking good for Darian. I don't see her. I don't see her as a winner this season at this point. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I really like Darian Lake. She's so fun to tour with. Also, she's so funny. Yeah, but it is giving blood in the water. Darian was on the um, the inf- my infamous uh, last hurrah with Murray and Peter. The tour that should not be named. Cause baby, when M calls, the dolls will ball. Fitch Madonna's canceling more more drag tours than <laughs> that COVID nineteen. <laughs> uh, Mo, who's winning All Stars eight? Listen, as a winner of All Stars, you've been here, you've done it twice. Who's gonna win All Stars eight? I see Jimbo. I see Candy Muse. And no, I'm not looking for. I'm not looking for three names. I'm not looking for eight names. Okay, I, I'll give I two. Need one, I need one name. I'll give two. I want Jimbo. No, no, sorry. I want Kahana to win. I think Jimbo's going to win. And then who do you think is no, no, Bob, the best contender Bob for answer. the fame game? Bob has to answer. Who, okay. oh, who do you want to win? Who do you, who do you think is going to win? You want Kahana to win? I do. I, I, I'm kind of obsessed with Kahana. I, I, I think she's so funny in her talking heads. I think she's so charming. There is a level of charisma I have never seen from Kahana on Drag. Well, she was, you know, her last season, season 11. And she's just so charismatic. She's so self-assured. And the confidence that she is exuding, I find it to be very attractive. And I really want her to win. I want, um, I want to see uh, Candy win. And I think she's going to. You want Candy to win, and you think Candy's going and to I win. I think she's going to. Yeah. Who, do think, who do you think is going to win the fame game? That's a good question, because these girls are not, it's not giving, it's not giving what I need from the fame game. Like, I want to see 
also I want to see girls compete from the beginning. Like I would be, I would be, I would be posting my looks anyway. I think Heidi's gonna win the Fame Games. Yeah, her looks. People have been really responding very well to her. I would agree with that. And of all the people who are making digital content, she's doing, in my opinion, the best so far. Like, I feel like for the, you, you think Nisha and Monica Beverly Hills should have, like, when the girls came back, I'm like, oh, it was a design show. Do you think they should have, like, recorded them making their outfit? But I would have I would have even done the challenges. I would have done a sketch. I would have done an <laughs> SNL challenge. Right. I would have done a rap. I would have done everything. Right. I would have done the whole nine yards, truly. Yeah. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to look for Monica. My phone's being weird. I'm trying to look for Monica Beverly Hills' Instagram. Is she posting all of her looks? Can you use Instagram on her? No, it's weird. Mine says couldn't load oh. activity. Well, I can't check Monica Beverly Hills because Instagram is down for the moment. But it is what it is. There's this. There's this. Uh, Kim Kardashian did this interview saying that motherhood is so hard, and sometimes she cries herself to sleep. And you know the comments Ooh. are just Kim Kardashian. She's like, like, be, like being a single mother is hard, and to, oftentimes she cries herself to sleep. And I just love reading the comments, <laughs> the comments and stuff like that because you know people saying, "Oh, you have money, you have nannies." One of the top comments is, "Bitch, bitch, I be crying myself to, I be crying myself to sleep too. I'm, I'm, I miss my nigga too. So what?" <laughs> Shout out to all the single moms in the world. Yes. Um, well, Monet, I love you very, very much. Do you we'll think? See who wait, hold on. Do you think? That, do you think because Kim Kardashian has money that 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 that, that, sh- that she should be devoid of emotions and, and of the emotions and feelings of being a single parent? No, th- there's a study that shows that money doesn't make you happy. Right, it can make you more comfortable. There's 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 a whole study that shows that money does not make make you happier. There's no there's no proof that uh that that wealthy people experience depression less, less. than people who don't have a lot of money. The unaliving rate is not higher for, for for poor people. It's like there's no, there doesn't seem to be a, a a direct correlation to money and happiness. Yeah, I agree. And like well, just yet, gaining money and being happy, there's a there's a correlation to losing money and sadness, but there doesn't seem to be a correlation to gaining money and happiness. Yeah, so this bitch can be a billionaire and still be fucking crying because she's a single parent. Like that's just, you know, whatever. Anyway, but I can see why someone would be. I could see why someone would, who would not have money would look at that and be like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Mm-hmm. That that also makes sense to me as well. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll do a rivalry about it. You know, what? I'll text Kim. Maybe she'll come on the pod. Kim Chi, honestly, Kim Chi, Kim Chi. I'm gonna ask Kim. To Work. <laughs> and then we have Kim Chi and Keller Kardashian together. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> To make one Kim Kardashian. All right, I love you very much. I love you too, Roberta. Bye.